bear. I know it's been a hot minute. Listen, sometimes the YouTube creative fairy just doesn't hit your house up for a little while. And sometimes pandemic stress just take over. And you gotta take some time to yourself, you know? But we are back. Thank you for sticking around. Welcome back to another video. Let's get some festive videos in here. I don't necessarily have a plan for this month. And a lot of you asked if I would be doing Vlogmas. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> I love watching vlogmases, but that is just the kind of commitment I am not ready for. Especially with my work schedule, it just wouldn't really work. Maybe one year, but just not this year. But nevertheless, we are doing a very fun holiday themed video today. So a couple weeks ago, I got sent a PR package from a company and in that package was, drum roll please, this fun, uh, cookie kit, uh, pre-baked, ready to decorate gingerbread cookie kit. Who doesn't love a cookie kit during the holidays? Now, fun fact, I've never actually baked gingerbread cookies. So perhaps that is something that down the line I will do for this channel. But today I thought what a waste it would be to like decorate these and not film it and share it with you guys because just what a fun festive activity, right? And in honor of this gingerbread cookie decorating video, I have also um, accidentally kind of like dressed like a gingerbread person. So we're off to a great start. So let's dig into this box. I haven't opened it yet. What I think I'm gonna do is try to like decorate my cookies kind of like those. I'm gonna use them as a guide. I think that'll be fun and then we'll see how well I do. So I thought in addition to decorating these cookies, I'm struggling to get this open one second. I think we need scissors. Why do people make packages impossible to open? As I was saying, I thought in addition to decorating these cookies, I would also attempt to do a Q&A. I asked you guys on my Instagram to ask me questions. So if you don't follow me make sure you follow me because that's where I always post my like ask me Q&A questions questions box we'll see how many questions I get through I don't know how much concentration this decorating will require but I have faith in myself here we go let's do a little call okay so we've got some piping bags and some um sprinkle balls what are these called sugar balls I don't know. oh wow I was Wait a minute not expecting them to be this big okay so we've got eight pretty massive <laughs> Pretty massive gingerbread bin. Like, can you see compared to my face? Okay, then we've got our icing um, bag. Looks delicious. What's in here? Unmarked white pouch. What is this? Let's read the box. Oh, is this the black icing too? That is rock solid. Okay. We've got our red icing in here. Oh no, this is the black icing too. I'm confused. What is this? What is this? Oh, green fondant. Okay. I know what fondant is because of Bake Off, but what am I supposed to use this for? Like knead it out and cut it into shapes? All right, guys. I don't know, but I feel like if any of you guys watch the Great British Bake Off, I kind of feel like I'm doing a technical challenge. They're like, use the fondant. And I'm like, what do I? How? Okay. Well, fun. That says on ice bag for best consistency knead pouch before using or place in bowl of warm water for one minute to apply icing cut a quarter inch opening at the corner of the pouch and squeeze gently okay well let's get the balls out of out of this one there's not a single bag in this package that i'm going to be able to get into without scissors christmas balls so this is what we're working with i think i'm going to need this or do I place it in a warm bowl? Let's do both. So while I do that, I'm gonna get into the first question. Let's see here. I have them all on my phone as always. Okay, the first question is for my mom. She always participates in my Q and A's. What do you like the most about the holiday season? I thought we'd start this off on a holiday end question. Also, how am I supposed to knead this bag of icing? I'm just gonna do it the way you'd kind of do bread. This feels very strange. The thing I love most about the holiday season is just the uninterrupted time I have with my family, which I know is gonna be very tricky for a lot of people this year. Obviously, with coronavirus still very much a thing in all of our lives, the holidays are gonna look very different for a lot of people. And unfortunately, not everyone is gonna get to spend it with their family, which sucks to be quite honest. But yeah, I think that's definitely my favorite thing about the holiday season is being with my family, eating good food. When it comes to Christmas, because I still Christmas it's like decorating the tree with my family actually we'll get into that a little bit later because I think someone asked about Christmas tradition so I'll get into our Christmas tree tradition later yeah I don't really know I don't think kneading it like like bread kind of using you know like the this part of my hand was really the vibe I think it's just more about doing this guys let me know down below I don't really is this how you need icing I feel like David and Schitt's Creek when they're doing that one recipe and and there's an instruction that says fold in the cheese and they're both like what does that mean so like need the icing. What does that mean? That looks pretty good to me, I think. So there's our white pouch done. Moving on, pouch number two. Can you see that it's red? Question number 
two. What was the first ever movie or show you were in? I don't remember the first show I was in, but the first movie I was in, I I believe it was Fever Pitch, which um, was like a baseball comedy directed by the Farley Brothers, starring Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon. And I was, I think, 12 years old when I did that. And it was a lot of fun. They shot that in Boston and Toronto. I was part, obviously, of the Toronto shoot. And it was just the most fun. Like, I played one of Jimmy Fallon's students, and there were four of us total of the sort of, like, core students. And it was just so much fun to, like, be on this big production with a bunch of other kids. Yeah, I remember it was just really special. Like, obviously, Drew Barrymore, I'm still a huge fan. So working with her, Jimmy Fallon had just come off of SNL. I think Fever Pitch was maybe the second movie that he did right as he came off of the show. I just have super fond memories from that shoot. They were both so sweet. I still get people messaging me about that movie all the time, which is so funny. It's really crazy when you start acting young to have like footage of you from such a young age in this like time capsule. I don't know, I'm just such a baby. Yeah, that was probably the first movie I think that I was in. Fever Pitch, check it out. Okay, next question. Do you read and write in Russian? Um, I do, not very well. I've gotten better at both, but um, for those who don't, I was born in St. Petersburg, Russia. I moved to Canada when I was five years old, so I didn't really go to school there. Any reading or writing was just like what my mom was able to bestow upon me. When we first moved to Canada and she was encouraging me to, to speak and to read and to write, I was definitely way more resistant to it. But as an adult, I am so, so happy that she like enforced that rule of law in our house. So I speak it fluently and I'm getting better at reading and writing because I'm practicing more now because it's something I value more as an adult than I did as a child. As a child, it was just like annoying and it felt like work, but as an adult, it's like I'm very, very proud to be bilingual. So I want to expand on that as much as possible and like be really strong in all areas of the language. So yeah, I'm still practicing. I'm not great, but like I can get by. I can definitely get by. I'm just like a little bit on the slower end. <laughs> okay, I think we've needed both of these enough. Here we go, I guess. So we need to cut a quarter inch opening. That feels good. I feel like that's definitely way too big. Okay, one sec, I feel like that was too big. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just tape up that side we just cut. Just have a little redo. I feel like that's better. Let's do the red. Sure. Icing is good. Let's do another question. What is a must-have when you know you have a long day of filming ahead? I'd say that my top must-haves if I have a long day of filming are a charged phone with a lot of podcasts on it and my AirPods. I've been on such a podcast kick lately. If you've watched my previous vlogs, I feel like I always mention what podcasts I'm listening to at the time. Uh, still loving, you're wrong about. But yeah, let me know which ones you're enjoying. I love listening to podcasts. They're like, well, obviously what I listen to when I'm on set, what I listen to when I'm getting to set, when I'm on a long drive, I'm stuck in traffic, whatever. I love them, so please leave them down below and let's spread the podcast love. Let's get a little bit of movement going on these cookies. I'm not gonna do all eight, because I didn't realize they'd be that big, but let's open the first package. Mmm, trying to think what I wanna do first, and I'm kind of digging this one over here mainly because she's just white and red icing and I don't have to use the fondant, which I'm honestly quite scared of. So she's gonna be our um, little, our muse, our muse. Now, do I do all white first and then put the apron on top or do I leave space for the apron? I think I do all the white and then I put the apron on top. Let's do that. Well, here goes nothing. Start with our white icing. Let me get another question going while I ice this and try to do two things at once and it'll either be great or a, a disaster. You probably can't answer, but are you incorporating more BLM and racial inequality scenes this year? I would say that racial inequality and socioeconomic inequality, among with a, a plethora of other things, have always been at the forefront of what our show is about and what it represents and the sort of conversation conversations we're having. So yeah, absolutely, it will be incorporated. At, I think it's it's always been a part of our foundation. I'm sorry about this barking dog, it's really distracting. It's always been at the core of our foundation and what we're about and what we represent and the topics that we think are important. So you can bet we will still be discussing them. You gotta keep these conversations going. You gotta keep them happening um, because having the tough conversations is like how we're gonna make any kind of progress in this world. So yeah, and it has been a year. Okay, <laughs> and on that note, let's ice this gingerbread man. <laughs> so nervous. How do I even hold this? That feels good. That feels good. Okay, so let's start with a little collar. So you can get a nice little collar. I feel like that's better. Sleeves. There we go. I just gotta fill all this in. But now that I'm now that I've gotten this far, I'm wondering if I should do the apron 
and then do the icing around because otherwise it's kind of a waste. Let's do that little strap. Okay, or the big strap. Okay, sure. Half circle action. Oh, <laughs> okay. This fill is kind of... You know what, I think it's gonna look good from far away. I would just say either squint or like stand back and it's gonna look great. What I don't get is how they got it so smooth. What if we use back of a spoon? Look, that's kind of working. Kind of smoothing it out there, improvising. Look at that, I'm like a professional gingerbread decorator. You know what, I don't hate it, but I, I do think I'm only gonna do like one or two of these because this is a little more complex than I thought. <sighs> Next question, what do you get at Starbucks? Well, let me tell you, it's not particularly interesting, but I'm happy to share. So if I want something festive, right now I've really been liking the chestnut praline latte, half sweet with almond milk, but still get the whipped cream because you always get the whipped cream. And then if it's an early morning and I'm on my way to work, just like trying to get a caffeine fix in, then I'll typically get either a cafe misto or um, an Americano misto, both with almond milk. I feel like that's not the most exciting Starbucks order, but listen, it's not about being exciting. It's about accepting that maybe you're not that exciting, but that's what you enjoy. So, okay, back to this cookie. Let's start filling in some of this white here. Guys, it's not it's really not too bad so so far, right? This part I'm not too worried about. I'm worried about I'm worried about her hair. Because that's gonna require detail that I don't know if I'm capable of with this icing. But we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So let's get this bit filled in. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, look at that sweater detail. That's like a cute knit. I'm gaining my confidence back. I think we're onto something. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but you know what? There are worse things. It's uh, got character. There we go. Let's do some of these. Cute, cute. Okay, next question. What is your favorite Christmas tradition if you celebrate? I do celebrate and I started getting into this a little bit at the beginning of the video, but my favorite Christmas tradition is decorating our Christmas tree with my family and every year, every person in the family will buy a new ornament and they'll hide it on the tree and then we'll all come together and all have to find like the new Christmas decorations that went up. Through the years, that's how we have built up a collection. We have so many ornaments now that we're not always able to get all of them on the tree every year. So we'll sort of have to swap some of them out. It's just great to look back and like remember where you got a certain ornament. Sometimes when we're traveling, we'll pick them up. So it's a really, really great way to like capture a memory of a certain time. Also a great way to like accumulate ornaments without getting them all in one go. And we always decorate the tree to the Michael Buble Christmas album, because dare I say it is the superior Christmas album. I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I totally stand by that, but it is a really good one. Let me know what your favorite Christmas album is. Ooh, I think it's time for the hair. Okay, well let's start simple. Let's start with the face and I think if we start with the smile and the eyes, it'll give me the confidence to do those little swirly curls, you know? That's pretty cute. It's a little bit more like gingerbread Mozart. Are we mad about that? Let's do the finishing touches here with a couple of little gems here. Guys, I think they are complete. Thoughts? Give me a rating out of 10, but I'm gonna give myself a seven because it's kinda cute, kinda cute. One complete. I don't know how much more I have in me because that was honestly quite intense, but I think I'm gonna try to do one more. Him or this one with the scarf. I kind of like his mustache, so you know what? We're gonna do that. Let's get another question going here. So the next question is kind of two combined because I got similar versions of both of these, which was one, what is the hardest part about filming during COVID? And two, how difficult is it to wear a mask and be careful of COVID while filming? So the first thing I want to clarify, I have posted a bunch of stuff on socials with me in my PPE gear. We're not filming with that on. So that's just what we wear like to and from our trailers, the makeup trailer, to and from set, um, anytime essentially 
especially that the cameras aren't rolling we've got all that stuff on but when we are shooting we're just gonna look like this yes it is difficult at times I think the hardest part is just not being able to interact in the same way so obviously we're not hugging each other even in our holding our cast chairs are spread at least six feet apart to keep everybody safe so you know the like day-to-day -day interaction with cast and crew is very different but we are all coping as best we can we're all just really happy to be back at work and have a job yeah just making sure that everyone is doing everything in their power to keep things going as smooth as possible so is it difficult and is it different yes but things are difficult and different for everyone around the world and they're much more difficult and much more different for other people than they are for me yeah i'm just really grateful we get to make another season for you guys and we hope you love it and yeah stay safe back to our little mustached gingerbread person so this shirt's a little different this time we've got a, a v-neck happening There's our sure. Okay, next question is a little bit niche, but if you follow me on Instagram, you won't be surprised. Top of three things at Trader Joe's. I got a lot of you guys asking me about Trader Joe's recommendations, which just makes me so happy because it feels that I have aptly communicated my just absolute love of Trader Joe's. It's a little bit of a difficult question to answer, partly because what I love so much about Trader Joe's and I think what a lot of people love about it is that they've always got something new in, so choosing like a top thing is hard because I feel like that always changes, but I will give you my top three things right now. So the first one, which is always in my top three, is the dry roasted unsalted almonds. I don't know what it is about these almonds. I feel like they're like roasted the perfect amount. They've got the perfect amount of crunch. Like they're just the best. I have them at least once a day for a snack. They're also like very, very reasonably priced for a giant pack of almonds. Let me show you. As you can see, almost on this pack. I love these so much that I even had a friend mail me some when I was back in Canada quarantining. I just can't be without them. The second thing which will come as no surprise to anyone is the everything but the bagel seasoning. I feel like this might be like the top product that they sell in the entire store, but I love this on my avocado toast. It's sesame seeds, sea salt flakes, dried minced garlic, dried minced onion, black sesame seeds, and poppy seeds. And then my other thing that I've been absolutely loving from Trader Joe's are these. So this is the mini hold the cone chocolate chip ice cream cone. They're literally, I haven't opened this package, but let me open it just to show you. They are essentially tiny ice cream cones. They look like this. Oh, let me see. And they are delightful. They have different flavors. During the fall season, they also had a pumpkin spice flavor, but right now I think they've got like vanilla, chocolate, and chocolate chip. Chocolate chip is my favorite, and the cone is also chocolate, so if you're a chocolate fan, this is the one I recommend. Those are my top three right now. I'm not committing to them as like my top three always, because I, it, that's always changing, but I just love Trader Joe's so much. Let me know actually your top Trader Joe's picks down below. I'm always looking for the next fun thing to get. I feel like we're slacking on our our little gingerbread man. So far so good, I think. The next question is, what was your experience like when you were in Schitt's Creek? <laughs> I've been getting so many messages from people lately who've seen me in Schitt's Creek, and I think that's because ever since it won all those Emmys, which rightfully so, it's an incredible show. I think a lot of people have just been streaming it, and yes, I am on, I believe the first episode of season two of Schitt's Creek. I literally only did one day on that show, but um, it was so much fun, everyone was so nice. So I worked with Catherine O'Hara, who I absolutely adore. Shout out Home Alone best Christmas movie. She was so sweet and so funny. And then I got to meet Eugene Levy as well. He wasn't in the scene with me, but he very kindly actually like came up to me after I had finished shooting and introduced himself, which was really nice. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I don't think at the time that I was shooting it, it didn't have nearly the amount of sort of cult following or press that it does now. I'm just really grateful that I got to be a part of a show that is now just such a huge part of the like Canadian TV zeitgeist and that um, it did so well. Yeah, 
it was super cool and super fun. I wish I had had the opportunity to work on it more, but I'm very grateful for the time I did have. But yeah, it was really fun and a really great experience and I, it deserves all the praise it's getting. It's an incredible show. Um, if you haven't binged it yet, go binge it. It's a really like easy, fun binge. The episodes are super short and it's hilarious. So you won't regret it. I'm gonna take some creative liberties with our gingerbread man and do a little belt buckle on his belt. We're almost done. I don't hate it. It's pretty cute. Final touch is this little curl here. Before we do the final reveal, let's get in a few more questions. What song or artist would people be surprised that you listen to? Well, I just got my Spotify wrapped actually. So my top artist <laughs> was Andre Desplat. And I'll tell you why. It is because he's the composer of the Little Women soundtrack. And that was the soundtrack to my life during the winter months of quarantine. If you watch, I think it was one of my first home vlogs in March when I'm playing Bananagrams with my family. We played that every day for months after dinner and we would listen to the Little Women soundtrack as we played. It's been a while <laughs> since I've listened to it but um yeah it was a little bit shocking when I was like Andre Desplat and then I remembered well makes a lot of sense because that album was literally on repeat. Is that surprising to you? I don't know let me know. How different is it talking to a camera when you're vlogging versus when on set? Um I think the biggest difference is well okay first of all it's different when I'm vlogging in my house versus when I'm vlogging outside. When you're on the set of a tv show there's an expectation that you will be talking around a camera um that expectation doesn't exist in the real world so it can be a little bit awkward and sometimes i get embarrassed vlogging in public but you just gotta get over that hump because at the end of the day i love having memories of trips that i've gone on and like activities that i've done i essentially just like gather up the courage i break out that camera i guess it's also not that weird of a thing in la than in other places but yeah i think the biggest difference is just like it's a lot more weird when you're talking to a camera outside of a film set, isn't it? Okay, here we go. You know what? I think they're pretty cute. Look! I have to say, I'm pretty proud of myself. My camera battery is also flashing at me, so I gotta wrap this up, but let me know what you think. Maybe um, throw some names down below for these guys. I don't even want to eat them. Like, I just want to have them as decor. Can I do that? I just want to, like, strategically place them around my apartment to bring me festive cheer. I don't even want to try them because I feel like that's so sad. I don't want to eat one of their limbs. No taste test today because I've now grown attached to these cookies. <laughs> but that is it for this week's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have all of my social media linked if you want to go follow me. Like I said earlier, that's where I post all my polls and ask you for Q&A questions. So if you don't follow me already, consider it. And that is it for this week's video, guys. I will see you on the next one. Stay safe. Bye.